Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at a $75 budget Joda the Unifier deck tech. From Dominaria United, Joda says legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. This deck is all about playing that legendary army, playing every legendary loving card until we eventually power our way to victory. Now let's get straight into the deck tech. As always we're starting off hot with all of that ramp. First one up we have Cultivate and Kadama's Reach that both search your library for two basic lands, putting one in your hand and the other onto the field tapped. There's Farseek to search your library for a non-forest card, putting it onto the field tapped, and Rampant Growth to search your library for a basic land, also putting it onto the field tapped. We have Nature's Law to search your library for a forest, putting it onto the field tapped, and Explore to play an additional land this turn, also drawing a card. There's Harrow and Roiling Regrowth to both sack a land, then searching our library for two basic lands, putting them onto the field tapped. We have Eureka Moment and Growth Spiral to draw two and one cards respectively, both also allowing for that extra land to be played that turn. Legendary creatures in Magic tend to have a slightly higher mana value, so having the more ramp in this deck, the better. We have Arcane Signet and Commander Sphere to both add one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity, with the Sphere having that secondary sack card draw option. There's Decanter of Endless Water to add one mana of any colour, also giving you no maximum hand size. And Felwar Stone to add one mana of any colour that a land an opponent controls can produce. For our final two we have Coalition Relic to add one mana of any colour and can tap to put a charge counter on the relic. Once per turn you remove all counters on the relic and add one mana of any colour for each counter on it. And Wayfarer's Bauble to pay tap and sack to search your library for a basic land, putting it onto the field tapped. Once again, there's no Soul Ring. I miss you, Sol Ring. Come back. Come back. Come back. Before we get onto those legendary creatures, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. Subscribing is completely free to do and it helps our channel grow and grow as we near 3,000 subscribers. If you're buying cards, then look no further than Market Leaders Card Market. Sign up and use our referral code gathering the magic to help the channel that little bit more. You love to see it. Now it's time to look at every legendary creature we're filling this deck with. First is Arvad the Cursed, with Death Touch Lifelink, and other legendary creatures you control get plus two plus two. And Sisse Weatherlight Captain, that gets plus one plus one for each other colour amongst other legendary creatures you control. You can also pay Wooberg to tutor out a legendary creature with mana value less than Sisse's, putting that onto the field. There's Shanid Sleeper's Scourge, that has and gives other legendary creatures you control menace. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, you draw a card and lose a life and Kethis the Hidden Hand, to make legendary spells cost one less to cast. You can exile two legendary cards in your graveyard to enable you to play legendary cards from your graveyard until the end of turn. We have some big budget breakers in Samut, Voice of Descent, with Flash, Double Strike, Vigilance and Haste, also giving other creatures you control haste. You can also pay and tap to untap target creature. And Reki, the History of Kamigawa, this is whenever you play a legendary spell, draw a card. There's Vega the Watcher, this is whenever you cast a spell anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. And Goro Goro, that lets you pay a red to give your creatures haste until end of turn. We've added Joyra, Weather Light Captain, this is whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. And Raph Capuchin, with Flash flying, and you may cast historic spells as though they had Flash. We want to be casting as many legendary creatures as possible. The more we do, the more Joda triggers, and the more we're playing another cheaper legendary card for free. There's Teshar Ancestor's Apostle, this is whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the field. And Rograk, because who doesn't want to cast a tasty, naught mana legendary creature? We have Drizzt de Erden, that when ETBs create a legendary 4-1 green cat creature token with trample. And whenever a creature dies, if its power is greater than Drizzt, put a number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on Drizzt equal to the difference. And Kari Zev, with First Strike Menace, and whenever she attacks, create a legendary 2-1 monkey token that's also tapped and attacking. We have Tolsmir, Friend to Wolves, the ETB is creating a 3-3 legendary wolf creature token. And Minsk, Beloved Ranger, the also ETB is creating a legendary token, this time a 1-1 hamster with Trample and Haste. You can also pay X to give target creature control base power and toughness XX until end of turn, also becoming a giant. Having these legendary creatures that make more legendary creatures are key, because thanks to Joda, each legendary is giving all of the legendaries plus one plus one, so this army could become strong fast. There's General Ferris Rockerick, 
With Hexproof and Multicolored, whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a 4 4 Golem Artifact Creature Token. And Jetmir, Nexus of Revels, that depending on how many creatures you have on the field, you can give the rest of your creatures plus 1 plus 0, Vigilance, Trample, and Double Strike. We've added Rien, Angel of Rebirth, that gives other multicolored creatures you control plus 1 plus 0. Whenever another multicolored creature you control dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. And Catilda, Dawnheart Prime, with protection from werewolves. Humans you control can be tapped for one mana of one of their colours. Handy as around half the creatures in this deck are human. And you can pay and tap to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. There's one of my favourite cards in Surak Dragonclaw, with Flash is uncounterable and creature spells you control can't be countered. He also gives other creatures you control trample. And Kalvori, God of Kinship, this is as long as you control three or more legendary creatures, Kalvori gets plus four plus two and has vigilance. You can also pay and tap to look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into your hand. On to the final five, there's Ratadrabic of Urborg. This is whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it isn't legendary and is a zombie in addition to its other types. And Abaddon at the Disc Spoiler. This is during your turn, spells you cast from your hand with mana value X or less have Cascade, where X is the amount of life your opponents have lost this turn. We have Faldorn, that creates you a 2-2 wolf when you cast a spell from exile or a land ETBs under your control. You can also pay and discard a card to exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. And Fibblethip the Lost, the ETBs drawing you a card. If it ETBs or was cast from your library, draw two. When it becomes the target of a spell, shuffle it into your library. Finally, there's Gigantha the Wellspring to tap and add Wooberg. This also being a card, if the deck is set at right, you could have as your commander a companion. Now we've seen legendary creatures, let's look at all the legendary loving cards of Frotha. First is Hero's Podium, that, like Joda, gives each legendary creature you control plus one plus one for each other legendary creature you control. You can also pay X and tap to look at the top X cards of your library. You may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into your hand. And Day of Destiny, to give legendary creature you control plus two plus two. There's Search for Glory, to search your library for a legendary card, revealing and putting it into your hand. And another tutor in time of need, search your library for a legendary creature card, revealing it and putting it into your hand. We've got Instrument of the Bards, that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a harmony counter on it. You can pay and tap to search your library for a creature card with mana value equal to the number of harmony counters on the bard. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If it's legendary, you create a treasure token. And Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, to return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the field. We've added Patriarch's Seal and Relic of Legends to add one mana of any colour. The seal allows you to pay and tap to untap target legendary creature you control. And the relic says you can tap an untapped legendary creature you control to add one mana of any colour. Ramp and legendary loving cards? You love to see it. For equipment, we have Black Blade Reforged to give a quick creature plus one plus one for each land you control, having that cheaper legendary equip cost. And Hero's Heirloom to give a quick creature plus two plus one, giving it trample and haste if a quick creature is legendary. There's huge board wipe Urza's Ruinous Blast to exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. And Yorgmoth's Vile Offering, this has put up to one target creature or planeswalker from your graveyard onto the field under your control. Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker. For the final three, we have In Bolas's Clutches to enchant target permanent. You control enchanted permanent and it's legendary. And Legendary Sorcery, Khan's Temporal Sundering, to give you an extra turn and return one target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Finally, we have legendary artifact Shorokai with crew 8 and allows you to draw 2, discard 1 and create a 1-1 pilot creature token. As always, before we finish on up with those lands, we're looking at the best of the rest in this budget brew. First up, we have some staple removals in Path to Exile to exile target creature. Its controller searches for a basic land, putting it onto the field tapped. And Swords to Plowshares to exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its mana value. We have Mortify to destroy target creature or enchantment, and Terminate to destroy target creature. And Sylvan Reclamation to exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments, importantly with that land cycling option if we need it. Now to round off this budget brew, we're looking at all of those lands. First on up, looking at all of those basics. To start we have 5 Island and 5 Plains, as they take more of that mana spread. Then we have 4 Swamp, 4 Mountain and 4 Forest to round off that basic bunch. We have Command Tower and Path of Ancestry to both add one mana of any colour in Joda's colour identity. The path says when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a type with Joda, draw a card. There's Ash Barrens with that land cycling, and then to finish on up, we have all of those new cheap tapped jewel land. 
Joda is five colours after all, and this is a budget brew, so we need to spread out the chance to get all of that mana and get Joda out on the board as quickly as possible. Joda is a great new commander option from Dominari United, and looking online, it looks like it's one of the most popular new commanders we have seen in a while. Hopefully this is a deck I can face against in the near future, just because I want to see how powerful it really can be. There we have it, that is the $75 budget Joda deck tech. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description box below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.